On today's episode of Inside the Artist, we sit down and talk with renowned author Emiliano Martin about his new book, Old and New Aphorisms of My Mood. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Artist. Today is Tuesday, August 17th, 2021. I'm your host, John J. Rupert, and our artist today is renowned author Emiliano Martin. Mr. Martin, how are you, sir? Wonderful, sir. How are you? Mr. Martin, we understand you recently published a new book, Old and New Aphorisms of My Mood. Please tell us all about it. It is a book I have written quite a long time ago under another title, and this time I decided to enhance the book, make corrections I needed to do, and add some more aphorisms of my mood as I saw it fit. How did you come up with the title? The title is nothing uh, extraordinary. Uh, the title used to be called 511 Aphorisms of My Humor. That meant 511 aphorisms were written in the book. The book was published way back in 2010. Uh, it's been sort of a successful book, as far as I am concerned. Um, so the title 511 Aphorisms became old and new aphorisms of my mood. At this time I changed the title a little bit because I can be a moody individual. I can go one way, I can go another way. So the title became All the New Aphorisms of My Mood. And the book uh, was published way back in May of this year. It's uh, obviously in the market. And it has about 400, uh, 563, 64 aphorisms. Uh, obviously, after 511, all the aphorisms are new, brand new. And, of course, they're originals of this author. What were some of your inspirations in finding this new material for this wonderful new book? The inspiration comes natural. It is something that is due to my personal observations of life, people, situations we go through every day in our lives. To the few that do not know, what is an aphorism? An aphorism is a statement, a short phrase that contains wisdom, usually accepted by people like something that Oh yeah, that, that's right. That's, it, it always provides that kind of a feeling. When people read an aphorism, when people hear an aphorism, they always give you the, oh yeah, you're right, yeah. Why did you decide to publish this book in both English and Spanish? Well, <laughs> it's a interesting question. Um, I am a native Spanish speaker that at the same time, I'm able to manage to write in the English language. So sometimes my mood is in the Spanish form, sometimes my mood is in the English form. So depending on my mood, the aphorism comes out in either language. And then what I do is I translate myself from one language to the other. Which is easier to translate from English to Spanish or Spanish to English? <laughs> it's interesting because, as somebody said one day, all translators are the little bit of traitors. And I myself uh, betrayed myself when I translate from one language to the other. Although, in 80% of the aphorisms on this book, 80% I believe I am very truthful to one language and the other. So, it, it, the work of translation has not been hard. What has been hard is to come up with the original thought and put it in either language depending on my mood. 
Can you read a few of your aphorisms from your book, first in English and then in Spanish? I uh, certainly would be my pleasure. I can, I got so many to choose from, but uh, I'll give you an example in the English language. Windless sails, boring boat. In the Spanish language, velas sin viento, barcaza de aburrimiento. Another aphorism could be, the maid of honor must dress up for the occasion. In Spanish, la dama de honor se deja vestir para la ocasión. I must say that sometimes the translation to the Spanish language comes m more poetic mm -hmm. than in English, although in the English language it comes as a powerful thought, at least in my estimation. Uh, another aphorism could be, without any opportunity there is not much to be proven, which is a fact in life. If somebody does not provide you with an opportunity, or we are not able to perceive the opportunity as it comes, very little comes out of it. In Spanish, it says, sin una oportunidad, no hay algo por demostrar. I could go on and on and on, because like I said, I have over 500 aphorisms in this book. We wanted to ask, how does this current pandemic changed the industry over the past year and currently? Everybody knows by now that this past year, actually year and a half by now, has been a disaster for everyone. I am fortunate enough to have enjoyed good health. I didn't catch any virus going around the neighborhood, but a lot of people have suffered a lot financially, uh, business going down, out of business. <laughs> it's been a disaster for everyone, affecting our brain, our physical conditions, affecting everybody's life. How has it changed the writing industry as far as getting together with people, meeting them in person? Obviously, because of the pandemic, that's been another disaster because most of us, or almost everybody, was not able to communicate physically with people. All of a sudden, um, presentations we used to have, poetry readings we used to attend, ceremonies we used to celebrate, didn't happen. We were prisoners of our existence. We were hidden behind the closed door of the house. So it's been affecting everybody's life. It's been a disaster. Now, what is the difference you've noticed by, like you said, not being able to meet personally, but doing everything online now? There is a big difference because being online, which is a big possibility everybody's exploring and executing nowadays, being online is not the same as being in person. Online, to me, and this is, everybody has an opinion, but to me, online is very plastic. You are reading, you are talking, you are presenting something before a camera that you don't see. Uh, you don't feel the warmth in the audience. You don't feel the atmosphere around you. You are isolated from the rest of the world. You are in front of a machine, in front of a... It, it is different. However, I met people who are very comfortable with uh, Zoom meetings and uh, uh, all kind of internet uh, arrangements and uh, they're happy. So uh, everybody's different. From my point of view, it's a big difference. I rather have a physical presence for any kind of uh, event we attend. Do you have a favorite aphorism you've heard over the years someone was quoting a saying or something you might have read? Oh, there are thousands of aphorisms around the world. Um, I know one in particular written or said by Benjamin Franklin. 
uh, he used to say that have a truth often is almost a full, a full lie. Uh, he was right. And even uh, Benjamin Franklin has many, many, many aphorisms. Uh, recently, it's interesting, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, very popular company, uh, he used to say something like, failure and invention are like twin brothers. And you think about it, and without any type of failure, in the process of inventing something, there is no way out. Failure and the invention go together, side by side, like twin brothers or sisters. Has there ever been in the history someone who was known as the father of aphorisms? Mm, there is no such a person because the aphorism is something that everybody throughout the centuries, every generation has people that come up with aphorisms. Uh, we have to go back to the Bible days. In the Bibles, we have Proverbs, but obviously the Proverb is older than the aphorism. But I would say that uh, that was the beginning of aphorisms. One of the differences in my estimation between the Proverb and the aphorism is that the Proverb is very, very old. It's something transmitted from generation to generation, while aphorisms are something more modern. You had mentioned before that you had your previous book that this book is coming off of. And we'd like to know, where can we purchase your new book? And where can we purchase all your other books? Most of my books are in the web, are in the internet, through Google Read or Read Googles. I'm not sure how to explain that one. Amazon, uh, the Barnes & Noble. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, Today is very hard to place a book in the bookstore. However, if you look for my name and the title of my books, I will appear. And there are a lot of uh, portals and a lot of uh, internet outlets that provide my books. In this case, if you put in all the new aphorisms of my mood in Google, it will come up the proper stores uh, through the internet that provide the book online. And how many books have you said you've written so far in your life? Um, I have published about 12 books of this nature, this type of books. And overall I have more than 34 manuscripts written. Um, I'm always writing something and I could spend the rest of my life just putting books out <laughs> because I have 34 manuscripts I haven't touched yet. And we met this morning, you had mentioned you just finished a new manuscript, what's that about? Actually, uh, yeah, I just put out, uh, I just decided to finish my manuscript uh, which I started to write about two years ago. It's uh, English poems, it's all in English. And this is called Over Clouds of Catum, poems by Emiliano Martin. I finished the last poem about two days ago, and I decided, that's enough, that's, I have about 60, 66 poems in this manuscript. So I decided to close the chapter and wait for something to come to my mind, probably today, probably tomorrow, who knows, but that will be part of another manuscript. So your fans are getting breaking news right now of an upcoming book. Yeah, I would say next year, probably. What advice do you have for your fans and fellow writers out there struggling to find their way? More than advice, I would say I have a warning, which is work very hard at it. I don't have to explain to anybody that in life, it's not what you know, is who you know. We may know a lot of people, but if people we know 
do not appreciate our endeavors, we cannot go too far. Once they know what we do and they appreciate what we do, we have to be ready. We have to be prepared and produce an excellent work in whatever we do in life. And then once the work is there, I advise perseverance and stay with it because without perseverance there is very little to accomplish in life. How do you want to be remembered as a writer? <laughs> I don't know if I want to be remembered as a writer because at least a good writer. I'm not a good writer. I think I am a thinker. So I would rather be remembered as a thinker. Not necessarily the best thinker because obviously everybody thinks, but not everybody, not everybody thinks in a positive way that is going to leave a mark behind once we go out to another world. Do you have a certain time in a day that you prefer to write? In the evening. In the morning, my brain, it doesn't work, especially since I became a retiree. I retired from my daily work. And I've noticed lately that in the morning, uh, after a second cup of coffee, my mind is not working. So to answer your question, in the evening is when I feel in better mood to write, at least to think. Now, do you ever jog something down and come back days later to work on that poem? Certainly. I sometimes notice something from somebody, some something I heard, something I've noticed, something I see, and I don't have time to sit down and write, so I take a note. I always have a piece of paper and paper and pencil with me, and I take a note, and then later on, a week later, maybe I write something expanding on that idea. But obviously, uh, yeah, I take notes. I wanted to ask you about revisions. A lot of poems don't like to revise their work. They figure it's done, it's finished. Why do you prefer to revise a lot of your work? I, I'm never satisfied with my work. That's me. I am my worst critic. I finish my work and I put it aside. I try to put it aside for a couple of days because I know that in a couple of days my mind is going to change and it happened to me all the time. I look at a poem I have written 10 years ago and I said to myself, oh my lord, why did I write this? And I changed the whole thing and I come up with a new poem. Revising is good. However, there are people who were genius, either painters or poets or who never touch up their work, but they were genius. They were not good writers, they were not good painters, they were genius. Most of us are not that caliber. Is there anything else you'd like to say to everyone out there watching and listening to this interview? As I said in one of my poems, a long time ago I wrote a poem about saying something. Thank you for giving me hope, understanding. Lots of patience, help, adulation, and love. Love you all. Once again, Mr. Martin, please tell us where we can reach you as far as purchasing one of your many books. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Lulu.com, uh, Goodreads. Uh, there are many, many internet outlets out there that carry my books. Obviously, if you go to Google and type my name, Emiliano Martin, author of poems, poetry, some kind of a word related to literature, my name will come up with a lot of sites in the internet. Once again, Mr. Moore, we want to thank you for your time and everything you've given us so far, and we look forward to your new book coming out. Thank you, John. I appreciate that very much.